Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for MotionTutorials.net with a new Illustrator tutorial going over what you can do with some of the cool 3D tools all right inside of Illustrator to create 3D text, shapes, objects, letters, and more. This episode is brought to you by Artbeats Express. Create a free account at Artbeats Express Stock Media by subscription and receive complimentary broadcast quality resolution content files. No credit card payments or obligations are required. Click the link for more details. So there are some pretty cool 3D tools right inside of Illustrator that can do some neat stuff like we see here. And all these are taking advantage of these effects under Effect 3D. And we have our Extrude and Bevel, Revolve and Rotate, which we're using here. And the great thing about these is if we pick anything, you can see there's the original letters once you hover over. And if we take a look at appearance, it's actually all non-destructive. So we can pop any of these back open at any time, make changes, edit them, and it's still live text in this case, so we could even change the text and it's gonna automatically and very quickly update everything that is being added if we just wanted to use that, even duplicate it, and then change something like the letters or color. It's copying everything and it's still all editable. And if you haven't used this Revolve, we can do some really cool stuff. If we take a look at this, it's actually just the single line and it's creating this 3D bowling pin, which you can use for illustrations or icons, all out of this little slice. So let's get started talking about these from their, their original starting point by just deleting that effect under appearance. So let's first talk about what we can do with effect 3D extrude and bevel. This is probably the most straightforward type of 3D thing. Basically we're taking our flat 2D text and extruding it by giving it depth. So if we preview that, we can see it's pushing it back. And what it's doing is extruding it based on this extrude depth. So if we push that back, you can see it gets much bigger. And since we're keeping things simple in Illustrator, rather than a camera moving around, we can actually just move our object around and see it from a different perspective and change these adjustments. Now, in addition to this window, if we wanted to be pretty exact, we could even type it in. So if we want to just be kind of pointing forward, we could do 15 or maybe something simpler like five or six, zero, zero. And there's this really cool perspective thing that I like to use pretty often. If we turn this up, it's basically mimicking the idea of a wide angle lens. We can see there's some pretty cool perspective that's being added to this. Now, sometimes you'll notice there's this little bug where if we have it all just straight forward and turn the perspective way up, we don't see some of the edges and caps and it's pretty easy to fix that. All we need to do is not have these at zero. So if we put it like two, you can see it fixes that, but we might not want it to be rotated too. So we could do something like 0.1 and even that tiny amount will fix the little issue that comes up. Another thing we can do is adjust what we're doing with our edges. Right now, they're just these hard edges, but if we change this bevel, there's some really cool different presets that we can do that's gonna change how it's rounding off those edges. And some of them are pretty detailed if we get to some of these later ones. Look at that, that's pretty cool. It's beveling it all the way throughout. We can change the height, so how big that bevel is. So we turn that up, you can really see what's going on. And this is whether it's gonna bevel into that or out. This is really important if you're doing something like logos. If we do this out, it's actually pushing it out and making it bigger. In is gonna constrain original text and put it on the inside. So let's do out because it's just some letters. Maybe something like this tall rounded, this gives kind of a neat little bubbly look and we could turn that down so it's not so big. We can also change the surface. So this is what the lighting is gonna look like if we want it to be plastic where we get some nice little highlights. No shading, which would just be the whole block or wireframe if we just wanna preview what's going on. And we can also click this more options button and now we can actually really adjust how that light is hitting it because you could see originally we can't really see our text and that's no good. Let's just turn this extrude depth down a bit so it's not so crazy. And now we can do things like adjust the highlight, intensity, ambient light, size. So if we're doing something with 3D and we kind of lost our color, we can use this to bring it back. And let's press OK. And now we can see we got our 3D text, but again, if we hover over it, it's still editable text. And this is what's awesome. If we could just use this, write out our name or something, and it's gonna apply all those effects, we could just get back to the word 3D. We could also still change the fonts. And this is why this stuff is really cool because it's completely non-destructive and it's just applying this as an effect in appearance. Now, if we needed to pop that back open and make any adjustments, we can just click that. I'll turn back on our preview and we could just make any changes if we wanted something else. Maybe we just wanna tilt it down a little more. So let's go like 12 and go to okay. So that's pretty cool. 
We'll get to this revolve in a second. Let's take a look at these other letters and talk about rotate. So you'll notice all these 3D effects have a dialog box that looks pretty similar, but it's just applying different things. And basically all this one is doing is giving us that same idea of our 3D perspective, but not extruding it. So it's a good way if you just have flat text and you want to make it look like it's on a 3D plane and even give it some perspective if we want that distortion without having to fake it and try and edit things point by point, but keeping it simple without our 3D extrusion. You could also add that light source. I don't find that as necessary in this, but it is still there. Let's go back to no shading. And we could go to OK, and there's that one. And again, if we wanted to do the same thing on the second letter, we could just duplicate it. And then on the D, open that up, and it changed it. Now, there's also some default settings for all of our 3D effects. So if we knew we just wanted it, one of these basic settings, we could do left, right, top, off axis, front, back. And there's some pretty cool settings to kind of get you started. And again, I can go to OK, and it's all still editable and live in my appearance window. Now let's talk about what we can do with this last one, this 3D revolve effect. So basically what this is doing is if you have a single line of an object like we have here and you cut out a little slice of it, it's gonna rotate it around 360 degrees. So if we have things like a bowling pin, a baseball bat, martini glass, wine glass, pint glass, things like that where we could flatten it to one little slice and rotate it around in 3D 360 degrees that's what is going to happen. So here we have this little line that I've drawn that represents one half of a slide of a bowling pin. So if you think about it, if you had a silhouetted look of something and you cut it in half, we can take this line, make sure it's lined up on the same vertical line, go to Effect 3D Revolve, and it gives us similar looking inputs. But if we preview what it's doing, now you can see is it's rotating that around. So if we looked at this from the top, or other angles, we can kind of see what's going on here. And if we look at it from exactly the side, so if we just zero all these out, or put it at point 0.1, you can see what's happening. So it's mirroring it on the other side. It's giving it some volume, which we can see if we move and our mesh comes up, and creating this 3D geometry out of that line that we can then rotate around and move. So this is great if you want something like Illustrator vector looking icon, but you want to be able to move it around in 3D without redrawing it every time. And you could even change shading to no shading. So now we can kind of get like a 3D icon. Maybe we're doing like a bowling logo and we could just draw that one little slice and then use that to manipulate it in space, get different angles, even add that same perspective if we wanted with only adding this one little slice. And then if we go to okay, we can see that it's still just this one single line. We can still select that line and change it and it's gonna update. And if we wanna pop it back open, we can go to this 3D Revolve. Now, if we wanna make any of this final, say we need this to be an actual icon, not just this little line, we can grab any of these 3D effects and go to Object, Expand Appearance. And now you can see that it's made one solid shape and it's still giving us some 3D aspects of it. So we can always open up our Pathfinder and pop on Unite and now you can see it's one solid final shape and that could be part of our logo. So you could do some really cool stuff with the 3D effects in Adobe Illustrator. If you're just looking to make some 3D text or three-dimensional logos and icons without having to dive totally into a 3D app. And if you have any questions on this tutorial or any of mine, you can hit me up on Twitter. I'm at Sean Frangella. And don't forget to follow the Facebook page at facebook.com slash motion tutorials. Be sure to check out the full website and online store at motiontutorials.net and motiontutorials.net slash store where I have tons of tutorials on all sorts of subjects as well as products for getting into 3D and making working in 3D a lot easier. Now, if you want to learn more about Illustrator and Photoshop quick tips, be sure to check out some of my other videos. And if you're looking to get into 3D, you can check out some of my 3D videos for Cinema 4D, Cinema 4D Lite, and After Effects where you can really learn 3D by clicking any of those thumbnails. Thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video.